You hear that? You see, I mean, I'm hearing the bamboo, I'm hearing the waves, the wind, but not the engine, because this is the quietest Navara ever made. Hey everyone, Vince here from Auto Industria, and we are well, right next to Taal Lake, and today we're driving the Dongfang Rich 6 EV. And yes, it is quite possibly and very easily the quietest Navara we've ever tried out because this one doesn't have a turbo diesel engine. It has pure electric drive. Now you may be wondering why does Dongfang have a Navara derivative? And the reason for that is because over in China, Dongfang and Nissan are very much partnered up for quite a while, I think two decades already. And uh, they produce this one. Actually the first, uh, one of the first times I went to uh, to China with Dongfang, I remember driving uh, this uh, vehicle, uh, maybe a different version of it already, but it was also pure electric. But a lot of the things being, for someone who's already interested in Navara in 2019, it was actually an interesting drive, which surprised me. Now, in terms of changes, uh, there actually aren't much in terms of what's in the back. Over in the front, however, you can see the differences. I mean, in the compared to the pre-facelift Navara, you can see that the grill is very much different. The headlights are different. The front end, they did change up quite a bit. But when you view it from the side, a lot of the things about the vehicle are very much Navara with the cabin, the way they do the rear, and the actual frame of the vehicle. Now, if I remember correctly, with the headlights of the previous uh, Rich 6 that I previewed for you guys, it had LED headlights, but this one has halogen main bulb, same with the fog lights the LED DRL is up there. That's kind of a strange decision, uh, I think, because, you know, being that it's an EV, you want to be as efficient as possible with the energy, and LEDs is one way to do that. Now, when you look at the front, you also notice that there's no intake for a radiator there because EVs don't require as much cooling as internal combustion. What you do have here, though, are two doors, and it's for the charging port. Now, some may be wondering why isn't the charging port over there on the back where, uh, you know, the, the fuel door is. Uh, actually, the fuel door is kind of more or less fixed. There's no way to release that. Not that I can find anyway. But the charging is right here in front. You have here, right? Oh, press that again. Right. You have here AC and DC. Yeah, that sounds very rock and roll right there. But AC, DC. So uh, this is the GBT AC charger. Over there is the GBT well, you know, DC fast charger. So depending on what uh, charging station you have access to, you'll be able to charge it so long as it's GBT. Keep that in mind. Some of the charging ports you find around the Metro are type two. The Rich 6 EV comes with 18 inch wheels and 60 series tires. The brand on the tires, I've never heard of before. It's called Triangle. I mean, I'm not really sure why, we, why you would call it a tire Triangle, but still, there you go. Black side steps, no roof rails on this one. So yeah, that's kind of strange. One thing you want to note is that when you look underneath the cab of the vehicle, you will actually see the battery pack. That is where they position the battery pack of the Rich 6 EV. It's not underneath the bed. Now, normally I would think oh, they should put it in the bed because that, would, that kind of makes more sense. But I think it's, it, has, it has to do with the center of gravity of the vehicle. They didn't want to upset it too much. So they put it underneath. The trade-off though, is when it comes to ground clearance. Because when you look under there, you can see that the battery pack, while it is protected, it does stick down a little bit from where uh, the chassis would be. So keep that in mind. If you look under here, you'll also notice that uh, being uh, someone who's familiar with the Navara, the suspension is different. And that's because this one uses leaf springs, uh, not coil springs like in the Navara. So that's a big change. It does affect how it rides, but it also gives it an increase in payload. Uh, I think the last time we took a look at this, it was around 1,200 kilos, which is a lot for a vehicle like this. Over here in the back, it's just regular pickup truck fare. I mean, bunch of emblems here in the tailgate. EV, so at least, you know, if somebody tries to catch you for coding, you can show them this. And then when we pull this down, by the way, there is a rear camera here. So that comes in handy when backing up. And if you notice, the bumper, also doesn't dip down, give you a lower step. It's a fairly high step. Keep that in mind. Now, when you open this, there is no assist. For some reason, I would have wanted a tailgate assist, 
but still what it comes with is a pretty sizable bed you've got uh, about 59 inches in terms of uh, length over here 44 between the wheel wells around 60.5 at the widest points but what's really nice it has a spray on bed liner this is actually better than having an accessory because water doesn't get in the middle there it just protects everything overall that's something i really like uh, it doesn't have the tie down points inside like i, I would have wanted those because same with my navara it has those this one does not come with them for some reason but the only thing here that's uh, really to talk about is when you look underneath the the bed of the vehicle you can see the rear axle with the motor bolted onto it and that's something it's something that actually concerns me a little bit about the vehicle because the way they position it it sticks down a little bit further from the axle i would have wanted it a little bit higher to give it more clearance because as you know things in the philippines there's a lot of debris someone might even want to take this on a trail well not really going trailing it's not a four by four but if you encounter rocks you'll be, have to be a bit wary about where you place your tires on the rich 6 ev So let's pop the hood of the Rich 6 EV. Automatic, just kidding. Now, one of the first differences I can tell you is actually from the opening of uh, the hood because given that it's got a bigger grill, they actually moved it from the front right here to over here. And they also engineered this little uh, sheet metal thing to you know, kind of give it a bit more clearance to reach the latch for the actual hood uh, thing. Also, the hood has dampers. I st I'm, I'm really going to get those because I want those on my truck. Now, when you do pop the hood, there's actually no motor here. These are all just charging electronics. There's a rack bolted onto where the engine would be to be able to uh, allow them to mount all the electronic stuff they need to have for the Rich 6. The motor is actually in the back, not here in front. This is a pure rear-wheel drive pickup truck. Uh, the motor makes 177 PS and 435 Newton meters of torque. The other version of the Rich 6 we looked at, it had uh, 163 and 420. So this one, a little bit more power, a little bit more torque, all in all. Uh, and also the range is longer because the battery pack is bigger. Let's go inside and check out what the interior is like. So right now we're inside a uh, resort and, and it's kind of weird because you're driving around an electric pickup truck and a lot of these resorts they like to use uh, those electric golf carts to you know ferry guests from one building to another so yeah in effect in effect I'm really driving around a big you know golf cart that is a lot bigger but anyways uh, one of the things that I really like about the Rich 6 and when you drive it around the first time you'll realize that is that it's so freaking quiet. You know, that is something to be expected out of any electric vehicle. Absolute silence. So much so that you actually worry, uh, you know, whether people can actually hear you arriving. And in this one, they probably won't unless you turn on the low speed driving sound. You hear that? It's like a little, you know, chime. So when I'm driving around right now, you know, so other people can hear me, I'll turn it on. See that guy, that guy heard me. So turn it around, check, make sure he's not going to get, you know, Run over, dude, I'm not going to run you over, so don't worry. And then now that it's a little bit more clear, I can turn it off and go about my drive. Now, if you notice, we didn't do a full walk around of the interior of this. And that's because the vehicle we're driving now is not actually the production model that we have for the Philippines spec. Uh, the interior of that one is very different. It's uh, actually a bit more upscale than this one. So this is like the pre-update version. So yeah, keep that in mind. But the only changes is uh, the screen uh, right here and so instead of uh, du the dual you know analog gauges philippine spec one has a full digital screen same with this one uh, the screen on this one yeah this is like you know a bit older so the newer versions has a much bigger screen much nicer overall comes with a lot of features but everything else pretty much the the way the seats are you know it feels very navara uh, the way the rear seat is very Navara as well, albeit it doesn't have the cup holder in, on the floor, which is, you know, some people like, some people don't like. 
depends on you what you prefer and the rear seat space and the cushioning is really good actually when you're driving in this one but keep in mind given that it's a leaf spring truck uh, in the back the ride is you know cer certainly you know much firmer overall here below the radio you have an automatic climate control system uh, and it's a single zone but you know I did encounter a glitch with it earlier uh, when I when I powered up the car this morning uh, for some reason the passenger side AC vents that these two were cold but the ones on the left side for the driver are, are, are quite warm which is kind of weird because you think only in a in a dual zone uh, climate control can you do something like that but for some reason yeah only when I restarted the car and then and then powered it all up uh, it was actually okay so there was some kind of glitch that I experienced with that now below it you have two USB ports 12 volt outlet there uh, just blanks there's, there's nothing here on these uh, on these panels so you know kind of wish they had some features there to make up for that I guess they found it unnecessary same with the panel down below now if you notice it doesn't have a traditional um, you know drive selector lever that you would find in an automatic Navara the gate type this one has a rotary type so PRND and you you just rotate it like you would find in let's say a Jaguar and all that so uh, the, those those brands in like the Chryslers back then they use these rotary dials it's not my preferred one I have to say you know, it's, it's not something like I, I go out in a car and I see that like, ooh, it's uh, such a nice rotary dial. No, nah, not really. I, I much prefer, you know, having a, a lever so I can, you know, more positively select, you know, what, what I want to actually use overall. Thank you, sir. On the steering wheel, it's a urethane wheel on this one. Uh, again, I'm not sure if this was going to be the correct spec, but on the left, you do have your uh, buttons for your audio system. Uh, including you know audio uh, volume up volume down next track previous track uh, you know make and take calls or set down the whatever yeah cancel call on the right you have your cruise control button so on off uh, and then you can set your speeds here uh, resume right there cnl is a uh, cancel so the way they do that it's you know they it, they use the letters so yeah kind of odd but still there you go it does work when i tried it out Behind the steering wheel, you have your stocks for your uh, lighting and for your wiper. Same as a Navara, so that's all pretty much familiar. On the left here, a uh, feature that, that I wish I had, the headlamp leveler. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would want that on my Navara. You also have the stability control button here, along with the V2L button. So if you plug in uh, an adapter, you can power devices, like if you were camping, you can power devices uh, when, you're, when you're out there. So, you know, use it like a big power bank. Just be careful when you use it, it will deplete your battery, you know, obviously. So uh, just account for how much you actually need and then, you know, use sparingly. Right now we're just in Batangas, uh, we're just cruising on this asphalt and it's actually managing it very well. Uh, being that you know, I, I do drive a Navara every day, I can tell the difference really with the ride. It's a lot firmer, you feel more of the road, especially with the back. With the front, it's about the same. Uh, with the back, yeah, you really feel like the firmness of the leaf spring suspension, especially when you're not loaded like I am right now. It's just uh, me in the truck. But overall, it's been a pleasant drive actually, very quiet. The steering is smooth. I mean, the way they do this, yeah, it's actually really good. I mean, nothing really you can remark about, you know, the steering of a, of a pickup truck overall. Uh, and when you actually want to overtake, which we can't right now because we've got two tricycles right now that are matching each other for speed. Now, when you do want to overtake, uh, the, you can do it in eco mode. By the way, it has eco mode and sport mode. So, you know, step on it in eco. The response is actually okay. When you put it in sport mode, it's a bit more liberal with it. So let's try it now. Three, two, one. Well, that actually sounds really good. And you can see with the power meter uh, on the left, you don't have a tachometer. What you have is a power meter and it's in kilowatts. So when you floor it, you can see it go all the way up to 100 on the left, which is actually kind of neat uh, in a vehicle like this. And it does sound like, like a supercharger, which is, you know, pretty neat. 
The Rich 6 doesn't come with a you know, multi-speed transmission. It's really single speed because the motor is directly mounted onto the axle. So it's really in the, you know, the current that it gets that it varies its speed all in all. So that's something uh, to keep in mind with, you know, the way this drives. It'll feel, you know, very different. It'll feel a bit more direct, I guess, uh, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, a couple of things that, again, I said I, I did find the selector a bit strange. Also, the way they do the engine braking or the motor braking. So, because um, a lot of EVs, they have uh, the paddle shifters on those. It's all about uh, how it uh, does the energy recapture, meaning uh, when it turns in the motor into a, when you slow down, when you lift out the throttle, it uses the motor as a generator to send you know, power back into the battery. Uh, so normally you use that with paddle shifters. In this one, no. You use these buttons right here. So uh, it's, it's three settings. So right now it's in the, or actually four settings. So zero, and then you have one, and then two, and then three. So in three, when you accelerate and then lift off, it'll try to you know, really slow down, try to recapture the energy. You'll see it with the power needle, it'll dip into the green, meaning it's sending power or charge back to the battery. It's, it's you know, recapturing that energy. When you subtract a little bit, uh, it, uh, let's say you put it into setting one, right? As for the range, uh, Diamond Auto Group EV Corporation, which is the distributor of uh, the Dongfeng line of um, electric vehicle, you know, commercial vehicles, they say this one can reach uh, up to 450 kilometers. And right now, it's kind of hard to doubt that because I've driven about 73.7 kilometers today from a full charge of 100. I charged up over at our friends at uh, Evo X Charge. They're over in Taguig, so they gave me a full charge GBT DC in like, I think, 17 minutes from 71%. So I started this day with uh, 100%, and right now I'm at 81 after driving 73.8 kilometers. So we'll crunch some numbers to show you what uh, numbers we were getting. Uh, but the good thing is it's it actually seems uh, you know pretty good all in all. And even when I was driving it around the city, uh, with the AC on, of course, you do consume a bit more, but still the, the range anxiety, not so much in this one. I just kind of wish they used the, the Type 2 because that one is a bit more readily available, at least in a lot of uh, commercial establishments uh, around the metropolis. One thing people ask me about the Rich 6 EV is that, is there any off-road potential in this electric pickup truck? And I would say a very limited one, because for one, it's not a 4x4, it's a rear-wheel drive vehicle. So while it can handle itself probably in some, you know, rough roads and all that stuff, it's not going to be as good as a, you know, proper 4x4 turbo diesel pickup truck like a, you know, regular Navara 4x4, which is like the one I drive. But uh, also when it comes to the way they did the electrical system of this one, uh, the way that w where they mounted the battery, the motor, the water weighting is not going to be as high as the regular variants. That much is clear. Uh, if the regular Navara can probably do around maybe 700, 800 if you're really brave. This one, you know, probably around maybe 300. Uh, they're not giving us any official figures on that. Uh, but that's where I would put the, the number at. So not anywhere near uh, the regular Navara variants. And it really boils down to how they did and how they fitted the electric drive system of this one. As to why, let's go back to the resort so we can discuss that a little further. The Dongfang Rich 6 EV is actually an interesting counterpoint to the Navara I drive every day. But the Rich 6 also offers us the perspective of what an EV pickup truck would be like. It's pretty quiet, it's pretty nice to use around town, but clearly there are some compromises with the way they had to do the vehicle. The reason for that is because the, the Nissan Navara was never meant to be an EV in the first place. So Dongfang, they had to find solutions to be able to fit the battery, fit the motor, the electronics, and all that. And uh, I think they can still improve on a few things, like how they position the battery. Could be better, they could have positioned it up here in front, or maybe do a two-part battery, or maybe even a little bit of it under the bed. 
the way they mounted the motor on the rear axle, that's also something that I think they really should improve to be able to give you the ground clearance uh, that a pickup truck user expects out of a vehicle. Also, there's no four-wheel drive version, but still, uh, given the way it is, I think they may do some 4x4 in the future, hopefully. I mean, when we see a fully uh, from-the-ground-up uh, electric pickup truck of the Rich 6 that they may launch in the future. Who knows? Only they can tell us. Now comes the price, though. It's $2.86 million. It's really not something you, we would consider as a private uh, consumer or an independent customer. But for uh, corporations that are looking for double cab pickup trucks, this might actually fit the bill. Depende na lang kung anong usapan nila when it comes to fleet. This is Vince of AutoIndustria.com. Thank you for watching. Let us know in the comments below what you think of the electric Navara from Dongfang. Mm -hmm.